The NBA playoffs continue on Friday when the Raptors and Heat face off in Game 6. Coverage starts with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN. We are ready to tip it off. Game 5. Steph Curry just received his award. Where do the Warriors go from here? Curry with Crab on him finds Thompson wide open. Steph Curry. And got himself free with a dribble and hits the three. Sees it on the brink. Aminu on Curry, behind the back, three-point is up. Oh, Stephen Curry! The Warriors advance to the Western Conference Finals. The Warriors close it out in five, thanks to Chef Curry cooking up 14 of his 29 points in the fourth quarter. So now Golden State will face the winner of the Thunder Spurs series in the Western Conference Finals. Now, according to our basketball power index, the Warriors would be slightly favored against the Spurs at 52 percent and heavily favored against the Thunder at 71 percent. Interesting. Stephen A., what's the better matchup, in your opinion, for Golden State? Well, I think the better matchup for Golden State <clears throat> would be San Antonio because of age and attrition. Um, you know, they play a, so, a slower pace. They're obviously a, a smarter basketball team. Uh, they're very comfortable playing together. But based on what we're seeing in, these, in this series against OKC, OKC seems to be the younger team with fresher legs, uh, not concerned with age, attrition at key pivotal positions, etc. Whether it be Tony Parker or Tim Duncan, to a lesser degree, uh, Mono Ginobili. But I think with Oklahoma City, you're talking about two of the five best players in the world. You're talking about a team that can go tit for tat with you. You're talking about a team that can be down 21 minutes and up five five minutes later because of how explosive OKC can be and how they can come right back at Golden State. They don't play with the precision and the cohesiveness of a San Antonio Spurs all the time. But from a talent perspective, certainly Oklahoma City is, is Golden State's equal compared to anybody else in the NBA as far as I'm <clears throat> concerned, which is something that I've said all season long. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that either OKC or San Antonio would lose or win to Golden State. We don't know. And if you're Golden State, certainly you don't underestimate either team at all. But in terms of athleticism and what you would have to deal with on a game-in, game-out basis, based on talent along with youthful exuberance, I definitely believe that OKC is more formidable than San Antonio. So I, I'm not quite getting you. Because you've told me now for several weeks on this show that Oklahoma City would pose a bigger threat to Golden State than San Antonio, which is why you're rooting for Oklahoma City because it would be not only better box office, you give them a better shot in part because of the games they played, the one you went to Super Bowl week, the, the next one at Oklahoma City where Steph hit, hit that 40-foot shot or yep. whatever it was. So. So, but you're, then you start off saying San Antonio's the tougher matchup for Golden State. And I don't get which is it. No, no, no. I, I, said go, I said OKC because of their talent. But I'm saying the way that San Antonio plays, the minimal amount of mistakes that they make, and the way they're capable of dictating pace, based on what we saw during the regular season, Skip, that would be a tougher foe for a team like Golden State, who's incredible, but at the same time mercurial in some senses where at, at, when, when they go up against a disciplined bunch, sometimes it can be problematic for them. Remember, I was in San Antonio when San Antonio beat Golden State when Steph Curry and Klay Thompson had combined to shoot two of 18 from three-point range. And so when you look at it from that perspective, I'm simply pointing to San Antonio's discipline. But at the same time, what we've seen against OKC it seems like age and, you know, other things have kicked in more so than we thought they would when we were watching San Antonio during the regular season. So not only did I believe that OKC was a better matchup talent-wise, but now based on what I'm seeing from San Antonio in this series, it's even that much more better. And because of it, they would be a tougher foe for Golden State okay. than San Antonio to me. Okay, I got it. But it's funny that on a day like today, the bandwagon is rolling for OKC. The emotional pendulum has swung back in favor of the Thunder. And the runaway theme of the day is that the Spurs are going to get run over tonight in Game 6 in Oklahoma City. So I'm sure it's jarring to many people, if not most people, 
to, to see that our basketball power index still says, hanging in there as I'm hanging in there, very by, by saying, wait a second, time out America, bandwagon jumpers, 48% chance we give the, the Spurs to win against Golden State, which is pretty high, 52 to 48. So it's, they're saying that would be a pretty close series. But the Thunder are only getting 29% love from Basketball Power Index because they're saying that Golden State would have a 71% chance of beating the team that you would like on their firepower and their younger legs to, to give Golden State a better run for its money. Right? Yeah, but Skip, nobody, nobody's assuming that OKC is going to steamroll over San Antonio. Well, You're simply I don't know talking about, about that. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't get that impression. Every I do. game, you so many, with the exception of the blowout in game one, it's been a nail biter, games two through five. It's just that you surmise that they're being on their home court in a game six with the closeout ability that Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook have. When they're in this position, they usually smell blood and they close the deal, including in the past against San Antonio. And I think what you have to <clears throat> stomach, what we're seeing from Tim Duncan, nobody saw this coming. You expected Tim Duncan to just, you know, go through the motions during the regular season, yep. pop to monitor his minutes, mm -hmm. and then come playoff time for him to resemble how he looked well, against the Clippers in the first round last year. Nobody expected to see this. Skip, yesterday I was on my radio show and I read Tim Duncan's stats. The man has not scored in double digits this entire playoff, these entire playoffs, first round against Memphis, yep. second round against OKC. He's got two two-point games. Mm -hmm. He's got one game where he scored zero. He's got four games where he has only registered one field goal. This is unreal. No, I, I no one you. saw that. Yeah. No one saw that. And so what you're asking is for us to believe in a closeout game that David West and Boban are going to step in and give you what Tim Duncan can't give you anymore, and that's going to be enough to beat OKC. That's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. Yeah, remember, L LaMarcus can fill that void also. He, he's 6'11 yes. and well, long, and, and yeah. he's, well, a, he's, he's their best rebounder. So don't well, diminish him. Well, on, I, on the no, board, diminish I'm him. About. I'm I, relying on him. I got it. I'm relying got it. on him. Okay. Yeah. So, again, BPI is looking at the Spurs as the number one defensive team in basketball, as a team that rivals Golden State in percentage of three point shots made, not in numbers, but in just percentage. They're a higher percentage three point shooting team. And they're looking, I think, at a Greg Popovich who is known for making his playoff series adjustments and gives them some advantage just on sheer coaching brilliance and experience. So, so that's why, and, and this is the bottom line to tonight, and I'm, I'm going to ask you if you're surprised, my Spurs are a two and a half point odds maker favorite, a betting favorite tonight at Oklahoma City. Are you surprised by that? I'm a little surprised. Because again, one and if a half. you're watching, one, I'm sorry, if they were one, two and a half yesterday. Yeah, it now went it's down one, one and a half. Yeah. And if, that doesn't if, surprise if, me if, that people are jumping on yeah, that bandwagon to bet it down. Yep, go ahead. If you watch, if you watch, Lamarcus Aldridge' talent is unquestioned. What you're questioning about him is the moment and will he rise to the occasion? In the case of Tim Duncan, the belief is Father Tom has kicked down his door. With with Tony Parker, there's questions about his health. Yep. And how, how and, 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 and how much attrition may play a factor in it. And then, of course, we question the aggression of Kawhi Leonard. We know what he brings defensively, but can he bring it consistently offensively? Is he willing to do that? There are too many questions when you're going up against a Russell Westbrook and a Kevin Durant in this situation because you damn well know what they're going to do. Yep. Hope you packed a black suit. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be a sad day. Skip sad day? Yeah, sad Funeral. day. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of the silver and black, Vegas, baby. They tell us what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And the Raiders could be making a move to America's playground. And one of our favorite NFL owners loves this idea. We'll tell you who that is and if we're on board when we come back.